There's a massive power struggle going on in the power tool industry. Do you need 12 volt or 18 volt? Is 20 volt max really more powerful than 18 volt? And what about these 60 volt tools? Let's talk about it. I'm Kenny Kaler, Managing Editor of Pro Tool Reviews. I have with me today Clint DeBoer, Editor-in-Chief of Pro Tool Reviews, and Tom Gage, who is the world's most interesting man. Today, it's all about voltage. It's all about power. We've got the power. we got lots of different types of power. We do. We do. That yeah. sounds like He-Man. Does anybody yeah. even know who He-Man is anymore? They'll uh, make a movie remake, remake of a remake, and then everybody will know what it is. That's, it's going to be terrible. Skeletor, He-Man, I mean, I got, the, didn't they say that? This is all very, very good power tool, you know. But can you imagine workwear like he had? No. Didn't he have a big X on him and that was it? Something like that. I guess that. he wore Some, pants. But, yeah, yeah, something I can't they remember. They weren't pants, Clint. What were, I, whatever. They were almost Speedos. Speedos? They were, it was a little concerning. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let's, let's talk about the power that we're running. <laughs> <laughs> now with with cordless power tools so you know for for folks that are new to cordless power tools a lot of times they're looking and they go okay well I, I see these smaller 12 volt tools and they look pretty comfortable but there's these 18 volt tools and that's got to be more powerful so how would you help someone decide which voltage system to buy into it, it's almost I, I almost see it as the other way around I think everybody just gravitates to 18 volt 20 volt tools because that's kind of always that's what's on the end caps yeah. mm -hmm. that's what's sexy that's what's on sale it's always available kids. it's everywhere yeah i almost mm -hmm. think it takes it almost takes a level of maturity to get to a point where you realize you can do more with a smaller tool because you know what you can do with a larger tool that mm -hmm. that kind of almost seems like what it is and and, and a lot of times the big platforms are those sure. 1820 very few there's very few manufacturers that have a wide 12 volt line and so, you, you know, if you want access to the most tools, you're typically on your 18, 20 volt. Although I started out early on with the um, 12 volt Milwaukee. So platform. forget everything I said. And I there's... It's, it's laser imprinted in my mind. Now. Well, I, I bring this up because I, I had 18 volt tools mm -hmm. and then I was introduced to the M12s. And this was their first, second generation. And I actually love those tools because in one fairly compact tool bag, I can keep a drill, an impact driver. I can keep, I had a, um, a multi-tool. I, I had a whole collection mm -hmm. and it fit in one bag. And so for doing punch out list type work, um, for final cabinetry adjustments and installing and things like that, it was a great go-to set because it wasn't this big bulky thing that I, you know, it's heavy, big mm -hmm. 18 volt tools, 20 volt tools, they're all bigger. But you didn't more. start there. I didn't. I started with 18 volt, like you said. Right. Yeah, and exactly. Then, See? And then I discovered. <laughs> you made my point. Then I discovered, holy cow, this is so yeah. convenient to have these more compact tools for these more finesse type jobs. And you've been through a lot of brands. I remember your, you had a rigid phase. You definitely had Milwaukee. Yeah. You had um, DeWalt I, at some point. I had DeWalt. You? Well, I started with DeWalt. You started with DeWalt. I, I had DeWalt first gen NICAD. 18 top volt post. NICAD. Yep. Top post. Okay. And so. Um, Everybody, by that. the way, had 18-volt <laughs> DeWalt top post. So I went DeWalt, and then I went to Rigid for a long time. I mixed in some Milwaukee along the way. Um, I was on Rigid for actually a really long time. And then more recently, I've kind of switched over to Makita. You, you're just, you want what works, and you're just going to kind of move around until you get it. And I like a single battery platform as much as possible. Um, I, I like it so that in my truck I have a whole line of batteries, and they all work for all my tools. Yeah. I don't want to have to worry about charging this tool for this battery for this tool and this battery for that tool. Um, at the house, it's a little different in my shop. I'll have a couple, I have still a couple stragglers that I can't quite get rid of those tools yet because I like them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, yeah, uh, one platform makes it easy. So interestingly, the other day, I had some punch list stuff to do at church and I grabbed 12 volt tools mm -hmm. because I knew what I had to do is I had to drill eighth inch into concrete block mm -hmm. you know so I was I was basically securing some things to a concrete block wall sure. and I needed to put in some some tap cons and I needed to you know it was very basic stuff and I just knew I didn't need to bring an 18 volt tool to do that it wasn't really going to get done any faster with an 18 volt tool it wasn't all I was going to do is bring heavier tools so mm -hmm. I brought 12 volt tools got the job done packed it back up I also like the belt clip I walked into church with two tools yeah. on my <laughs> on my belt with the little 12 volt belt clips, which was because I had a lot, I had you know, a lot of fasteners I was bringing and I had my hands full. So, so that was do, handy do too. people at your church just think you're cool or do they just roll your eyes when you walk in at this point? 
I, you know, what I do is I give away a lot of tools so they like me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're, they're actually, they're not excited <laughs> so to they see think you. He's they're cool. excited that you've got some tools on your hips and you're probably going to give them to somebody. I'm probably going to, I'm probably just, you know what, it's just not worth me putting these back in my car. I'm just going to leave them here. If you see them, pick them up and take them home. Yeah. So well, it's kind of like it is on the job site, right? If you see them, just pick them up and take them? Well, I want to go to your different. church. Right, yeah. <laughs> So I'm still weird, but they overlook it. Yeah. Okay. Fair I mean, another area that I think of, too, is when I used to have to crawl around in an attic, mm -hmm. you know, whether you're putting in a new exhaust fan or um, just lights or whatever you're having to do in an attic, it's one, it's, it's uncomfortable because you're having to crawl around around uh, your trusses. So small tools yeah. make it easier again. They're small, lighter. Um, they're, just, they're just handier, and they fit in tool pouches a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, so, you know, Milwaukee with their M12 system, they're actually a little unusual because their line is so broad. They are. Not all of the other companies spend as much effort in that. So, you know, outside of a drill and an impact driver, what other 12-volt tools would you want to have on hand if you're going to invest in that 12-volt system? One-hand recip saw. Okay, that's a good call. Yeah. Um, you know, simple plumbing jobs, uh, yep. it's, it's handy. Convenient. Yeah, multi-tool is a really yep. good 12-volt mm. tool mm -hmm. because the lighter that tool gets, I think, the better. Especially if you're if you're on the platform, you got a couple batteries. It's not a big deal if you're if you're doing a whole lot of work, like you're undercutting a room or something like that. Where sure. You're hitting a lot of door jams, but they run pretty. I mean, the batteries that are out they now last. they last yeah. pretty good, especially mm. brushless. So that's a tool I like. So those, so that'd be four tools right there: impact right. driver, drill. Mm. I mean, I know there's hammer drills as well now. Yep. I'm not a big fan of 12-volt. Uh, circular stuff. I was about to ask I you about that. I wouldn't even consider it. Yeah, I it's just, just not, it's not, it's not that they don't exist, it's just, it's not a serious tool. So it's, from a professional you know, standpoint, 12 volt is supplementing your 18 volt tools. Yeah, and there's tools that yeah. make a lot of sense to mm -hmm. have 12 volt and it, and it gives you all that lightweight benefits and everything, but there's just tools that you want the power and you want the ability to not have to stall out on you, not worry about it, whether mm -hmm. it's going to get the job done, and those right. are the ones you just, you're not going to win. So okay. should homeowners and DIYers, should they be looking at 12 volt or they really just need to look at the, the more broad 18 volt platforms? I almost think they're gonna stick, they're better off with 18, 20 volt platforms. I mean, it, it 12 volt is a convenience. Sometimes those tools are a little bit cheaper mm -hmm. and so that's, that's handy too. And, it, and, and Grant, if you just want, I mean, so remember when Rigid had that, that they had the two 12 volt tools, it was like 99 bucks for the well, kit. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking kit. of the one tool my wife owns. Okay. It is a Bosch 18 or 12 volt drill. That's it. Mm -hmm. so okay, she, I like their 12 volt. So, oh, yeah. so yeah. again, like for her, I mean, I'm the guy in the house that yeah. fixes everything, so I always have a honeydew list. But just in case I'm not getting to it, she can tackle most of her things with that yeah. with that tool. And that for her, that's the one tool that I know is in the house that's always there mm -hmm. too. It's always in the drawer, the front junk yeah. drawer. And when we come in the house. Yeah, if I think that's and that's kind of it. So, if 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 as a DIYer you just want a drill and a driving tool mm. and you're not really gonna get into cutting and doing other stuff like that and you don't really feel the need there are a lot of people that, that they come to us and they say, Hey yeah, what do you got? And it's always a, a drill and a driver. Yep. I, sometimes people will need something else, but then you gotta find out what platform they're on. A lot of DIYers drill and a driver, if that's the case, twelve volt is probably the simplest it's definitely sufficient sure mm -hmm. it's just that if you're a diy who thinks you might go into a lot more types of tools well, i think once you get into cutting your so there's diy yeah but then once you add cutting to it you're stepping up your diy game mm -hmm. yeah now you're okay. making stuff so now you're, right so diy yeah. is hey i'm hanging picture frames and i gotta mm -hmm. hang this piece on the wall or i you know it's it's i need a new towel bar in yeah, these my terms aren't like really well defined <laughs> so you, know, you could be a diyer that's just you know hanging pictures you could be a diyer make a bookshelf yeah so the diyer that's cutting things building things you know that's another step up from just the guy hey i'm hanging pictures and towel yeah. towel bars um so for that guy that's just doing pictures and towel bars you know that 12 volt drill is going to be more than sufficient yeah well i want to point out that's the second time that you have mentioned giving away tools okay and I feel like maybe your pastor and you have this plan to increase church attendance by mentioning that multiple times so people just show up. Is that what it is? I haven't mentioned my, should I put a link in the description below to my church? I'm gonna let you make that call. You're the <laughs> editor in chief, that's your job. All right, so no matter how many times this comes up, we still get comments, we still get questions. 20 volt max, 18 volt, 20 volt max, people think it's more powerful than 18 volt, but it's not, why? And it's factually not. <laughs> it's not up for debate. If you're, if you're watching this video, 
mm-hmm. and you're and you're just oh no it's it's bigger it's just it's just not you're wrong i mean i i don't know how else to tell you we, we've tried being very nice we've tried <laughs> measuring we've tried showing it's just not it's the same thing same it's thing just marketing it doesn't right, matter so why are people using 20 volt max and other people using 18 volt if they're really the same thing or maybe the better question is why are they the same thing Th- that might be the better question what What's always perplexed me is why we refer to 12 volt tools without a single care right. in the world when they're really 10.8. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Although one company does say 10.8, I believe. I think so. In but, Europe, and, they do. and in yeah. Europe, they all do because yeah. in Europe, you have to use nominal voltage. Right. But for years, and, and I think Bosch came out with 10.8 originally, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. they, went, they went ahead and bought into it and went 12. So yeah. everybody goes 12 volt on the, on the 12 volt 10.8 mm-hmm. you know, tools we were just talking about. Yeah. But for some reason, there's a debate over. 18 volt and 20 mm-hmm. and it's it's the exact same thing if you're comfortable calling a 12 volt tool a 12 volt tool you can be comfortable calling a 18 volt tool a 20 volt tool it's just that the marketing won't match up to whatever you're thinking so some people market at 20 volt mm-hmm. some people have been just doing it for so long they're not about to change their marketing mm-hmm. and they're going to keep it 18 volt or m18 or however they're going to refer to that all right so 20 volt max is more powerful than 18 volt change my mind same cells in the battery. What do you mean? If you were to open the battery packs yeah. and lay them out side by side, chances are the cells are probably coming from the same manufacturers. Yeah. There's only like three major cell manufacturers. Yeah, they're going to be Samsung so, or they're going to be, yeah, right. but they're, they're, they're yeah. the same. Yeah, so the same number of cells like. and same size cells, mm-hmm. same model number on the cells. Yeah, and, so, and so how it works, just so everyone knows, mm-hmm. and you know this, you've written articles on it, is that 20 volts is what you get when you have a freshly packed you know, freshly charged pack, mm-hmm. and, you, and you put the voltmeter on it, and you measure the voltage out. It's 20 volt. 20 That's why volt. The max. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then when you run the tool for a little bit, it settles into its nominal voltage of 18. Mm-hmm. And guess what? An 18 volt pack will measure 18 volt. 20 <laughs> volts at max, and, and 18, 18 it volts settles, it settles in. in. Yeah. And it doesn't it's take long for it to settle in either. Uh, no. <laughs> no, it doesn't take long at all. It takes about a half second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but here's, the, here's the beauty of it. The, the debate has been settled. Mm-hmm. And do you know who settled it? Um, me. You settled it, but I'm talking about for people who, don't, who think we're lying. Oh, okay. DeWalt has settled it. Do you know how DeWalt settled it? With like, the asterisk. With the asterisk next to V20 for Craftsman or mm-hmm. next to 18, uh, 20 volt max mm-hmm. on DeWalt tools. So all you have to do is follow the asterisk down. Read it. And read what it says at the bottom. And it'll tell you 20 volt max and nominal voltage mm-hmm. is 18 volt. They've done it for us. So, they, so they, they're Boom. on board. They, they're not lying to you. Nobody's <laughs> right. tried to deceive anybody. They're just, they've gone ahead and explained it. And it's just great because it's All on right. any, any well, page. Then, what about this 24 volt stuff we're seeing? Ah, that's different. Mm. That's different. And the reason it's different, it's got another cell in mm. the pack. So instead of five cells yeah. in each row, we're looking at six cells. It's got six cells. Mm-hmm. So if it's a, what we call a 2P pack, where it's got two layers mm-hmm. of cells, Instead of having 10 in the pack, it's actually got 12. So Hilti does that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got um, Flex does it with their 20 mm-hmm. volt. Cobalt does it with their 24 volt. Or sorry, mm-hmm. 24 volt, mm-hmm. not 20 volt. Who else does 24 volt? Or 22 point, what is it? It's 21.6. 21.6, yeah. thank you. 21.6 nominal. So it's 10%. But nobody calls yeah, it that, right? Yeah, I think there will. might be somebody Well, they there. do, overseas. Hilti. Right, yeah. yeah. I think there's somebody mm-hmm. is using 22 volt and just rounding up the 20. I can't remember who that is, though, off the top of my head. Somebody in the comments will leave that for us, I'm I think sure. Hilti was doing that for, yeah, it was, it was calling 22 or something like that. But anyway, yeah, yeah. It, America's, America allows a rounding and, and calling, mm-hmm. you know, the, the marketing aspect of it. So when you see these guys that are uh, marketing teams that are saying 20% more power, they really mean we have 20% more cells in the pack, so yeah, we legitimately right. have 20% more stored energy in there. Yeah, it's available. Mm-hmm. If they're going to, they can use it. If they want to use it, because what's cool is they can use it for more runtime or they can use it for more, more power, power. Mm-hmm. which is neat. Yeah. I mean, they have an option there that other companies don't. I mean, other companies have the same option too. They're just doing it with five or, mm-hmm. so yeah. So there is a difference on, on 24 volt, which is kind of cool. So that's not the same as a debating nominal versus <laughs> max voltage. I'm sure we're still gonna get somebody to say, yeah, 20 volt max is more. Well, I'd be powerful. disappointed. <laughs> I would be so right. disappointed if nobody commented, you know? Well, and realistically, mm-hmm. you're talking about two different tool brands and two different tools. So that 20 volt max tool might legitimately have more power coming out of it than an 18 volt tool from a different company. But the reverse can also be true. That 18 volt tool right. can produce more power well, than the 20 volt max. It's tool. not just the battery, it's the motor technology, the brushless motors. I mean, there's a it's lot the more. Gearing, it's there's, yeah. Right, there's a lot more to it than just the battery mm-hmm. for the power that comes out yeah, of it. Yeah, I mean, tool. for that matter, you might have an 18 volt tool that puts out more 
actual work right. than a 24 right. volt tool. Mm -hmm. So well, yeah. and let's let's run with that, right? So let's let's play this voltage game for a minute, right? So we've got Milwaukee introduces their high output batteries, and they're running these, you know, new rear handle circular saw using the 12 amp hour high output battery. And right next to it, we've got tools like FlexVolt running at 60 volt max. And then we've got uh, Makita running their X2 platform. So we got 18, 36, 54, mm -hmm. and they're all running around the same. What's going on with that? There's a lot going on behind the scenes. Yeah. And the way everything, what's really fun as, I use the word fun all the time inappropriately, but for yes, me it's do. fun, yeah. <laughs> when, we, when you look at a battery pack, you know, it's, it's, it's odd to me that you can have the same amount of cells, same style of cells or that, and you can kind of vary what you're doing. I mean, DeWalt proved that with FlexMult. Sure. You know, you, can get, you have 60 volt, mm -hmm. 20 volt, depends on if you're running them in parallel or in series, how mm -hmm. you're dealing with that. And so with a lot of these, it, a saw is a great example mm -hmm. with these tools, you're dealing either with a higher voltage, mm -hmm. which is a way in which the motor can use energy and, and, do, and, and maybe draw a little bit less current, right, mm -hmm. to achieve the power it needs. Or you're dealing with a lower voltage, a which current. is going to require higher current, mm -hmm. which is well, a little more strain on the pack. And so now you, you really have, it's a balancing act and it's a game that they play. That's the real game, so for, making it work. For folks that aren't uh, up to speed on the, the power equation, how, how do we come up with that? How do, how do amps and, and voltage turn into power? Current times voltage. Simple multiplication. Yep. yep, it's just multiplication. So power equals current times voltage. Mm -hmm. So if I need 2,000 watts and I'm going to put 18 volts into it, I can jack up the current to get there, or, or I can run at 54 volts and bring the current down. Yeah. But either way, I can still produce 2,000 watts. I'm really glad. I thought he was going to throw a math equation. I, I was like, oh, I thought no. about it for a second. I looked over at <laughs> you too. I was like, then no, you remember no but it's, it's, it's universal. That is, I mean, whether you're talking voltage for your house, yeah. you know, 120 yeah. versus two, 220. It's, it's mm -hmm. the same yeah. 240. It's the same thing. It's the math. The, the principle is the same. Well, and that, that was really the big deal with the updated battery technology. When we saw the 2700 and 21700 cells coming out, mm -hmm. and then we saw improved cooling and improved electronics coming into the packs because Milwaukee couldn't produce that rear handle saw on their standard 18 volt battery and get the same amount of power consistently. They needed that high output pack to really get the most out of it without right. risking damage to the tool or the battery pack. Right. You're going to, right. when you start pulling a lot of power out of these cordless tool batteries, and they're putting out amps mm -hmm. of power. But when you start drawing that power out, you right. get heat. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, you know, and so that's where I think some of the higher voltages will, will benefit from drawing a little bit less current. Current is kind of what generates a lot of heat in a pack. Sure. That's a generalized statement. You know, right. I'm sure a bunch of engineers, I could get in trouble for saying that. Like, that's they're not always cringing true. right now. Yeah, they're, <laughs> yeah, you know, but in general, that's, that, those are the things that, that, that people play with. And those new cells were able to handle a lot more draw, draw without you know, getting as hot, they dissipated heat a little bit better, mm -hmm. they allowed for more capacity. So yeah, they really changed the game. Oh, there I go. Oh, oh drink. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, heat is the enemy of your battery. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's- That's one of the big killers. Always, that's one of the big killers, whether it's your car mm -hmm. battery or your tool battery, it's, it's heat is what kills it. So it's always yeah. trying to figure out how do you get the power out without raising the temperature. Mm -hmm. and, and more more voltage versus less amperage is going to keep your battery cooler mm -hmm. um, and you know figuring figuring out that balance of what the tool really needs to do and it's fascinating watching how manufacturers deal with it you oh know. yeah because yeah. makita and dewalt they had their higher voltage systems come out before anybody was talking about 21700 cells yep. so give credit where credit's due yeah they sure. were ahead of the game and bringing more power to the table yeah they yeah. knew makita went we're gonna run an x2 we're gonna mm -hmm. run two batteries side by side and draw and that I mean, when you think about it, what have you just done? You have taken the power that you require for mm -hmm. that tool and you have divided the draw, by the two. need, by two. Right. And so now both packs are running. We've seen this in runtime oh, yeah. tests and, and mm -hmm. power tests. All of a sudden, the packs are, are being taxed at half of the amount of mm -hmm. you know, draw or current or requirements that they needed. And now all of a sudden you get not just double 
of the, of the runtime that you thought you'd expect to get, you actually get more than that because the extra gain is the fact that the pack's not working as hard. Right. So right. a single pack doing something versus a, mm -hmm. a double pack doing something. And in really addition is, to not so working as hard, it's staying cooler. Yeah. Right. And that's allowing it to gain some more runtime as yeah. well. And we, then, yeah. then you've got the actual cooling technology. So, you know, Flex is a great example. Right. Yeah. They've actually wrapped their, each individual cell to be able to cool down better. I'm sure everybody's doing some sort of technology. That's just one that we've actually seen the inside of the right. pack on. Yeah. So. We'll know we've arrived when you see the first cordless welder. <laughs> yeah, that, that's hey, a, yeah, that's hey, a thing. I'm going to throw this out there. DeWalt had a cordless welder. More or less. I'm just saying. <laughs> there's been one out there. So before we wrap things up, how does this all factor into OPE? Because there we even get into higher voltages. We're, we got everything from 18 mm -hmm. volt, 20 volt max, all the way up to we've seen 120 volt tools. And there was even a rumor, I think last April, about 240 volt tools. Yeah, and I think, so outdoor power equipment, and you could also throw in like concrete saws and, and mm -hmm. the bigger high kind of demand equipment, yeah. higher demand right, equipment. Right, and fuel coming from Milwaukee. And I think the difference between those tools is, you know, a lot of tools are built for tasks. Mm -hmm. They're built for uh, cutting a, a, across a piece of wood or ripping a piece of wood, fastening, you know, mm -hmm. putting in fasteners or whatever. It's a, it's a job that, you know, you kind of get at the end of the battery and you replace it, you, you know, swap it out and do whatever. But when you're talking about like outdoor power equipment or your string trimmer or your blower, mm -hmm. you're talking about I need to be out doing a job remotely somewhere in my yard, off the trailer for a either period a long of period of yeah, period right. of time, mm -hmm. or I gotta cut, I have two acres to cut, or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you're doing. You know, and now all of a sudden you've got a battery that needs the capacity, it needs the power to get the job done, mm -hmm. but it needs the capacity to endure that long because nobody wants to be out right. on a string trimmer mismatched with the size yard they have, right. not be able to get the job done, have to go back and, you know, especially pros, but even homeowners going back and having to swap batteries out. Right. You want to, yeah, you want to put the batteries in, go do the job, come back, charge the batteries for the night or whatever you're going to do for the week, mm -hmm. you know, however that works. So, so some of the most highly rated uh, outdoor power equipment, not just by us, but by customers is in that 40 to 60 volt range. So yep. do we really need 80 and 120 volt or do we kind of have it figured out in that middle area? Yeah, 120 volts weird to me, but and that did that came out a little bit. I think mm. you had some some products. I doing wonder that. if it's places like that are outlawing the use of gas powered equipment. You know, it's like if it's they're trying to go for those really long mm -hmm. run times. Like thinking like the guy running a lawn business. Mm -hmm. How do you do that all day long when you're out there? You don't have an opportunity to charge your battery throughout the day. So how do you have the capacity to be able to do that? And maybe it's more for those markets. I don't know about the the homeowner market that that would really make mm -hmm. sense for. Yeah, I think it, we're definitely seeing a sweet spot, and yeah. the sweet spot is right around 60 volts. Mm. And, and you know, and and f we're seeing a lot of 40, and we're seeing a lot around around 60. Whether they're calling it, you know, 56, 60, sure. 60, whatever. So, and then you do see some 80s, 82s. You see some mm -hmm. other numbers out there, but I think that's that sweet spot is there. And so, it's, what that tells me is that has that has a, uh, given them enough voltage where they feel like the draw on the battery is now allowing them to really concentrate on runtime. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not over, you know, those batteries aren't overheating at that draw, they have enough voltage, so they're not really heating that pack up. It's just allowing them to say, how, much, how many cells can we jam in here? On a larger pack, you're seeing, mm -hmm. I mean, and you can tell you're seeing seven and a half amp hour packs ten amp at hour 60 packs. volts, yeah. 10 amp hour packs at 60 volts-ish. Yeah. You know, and so that's telling me that they're solved, they kind of are high enough Mm -hmm. that now they're just concentrating on runtime, and I think that's what OP and, and equipment needs to be doing. And that's, that's kind of, that seems the angle they've got. All right, so that's a lot of information about voltage, but I'm sure we haven't answered every question that's out there. So if you have any questions or feedback for us, feel free to leave those in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Help us out by subscribing to our channel below. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit that like button and turn on notifications to stay up to date on our latest videos.